This morning we are going to continue in the book of Mark, still in chapter 2, as where we were last week. And I would encourage you to, uh, uh, you could, it's almost a simple thought process, unless God, um, in my conversation with him, says, hey, let's go with this. Because I'm going to tell you what, just because we're in the book of Mark, uh, I still ask God, are you, you know, is this it? Is this where we're going? Is this how we're doing it? Because it's not me. It's not about me. And so whichever direction God leads. But as God is leading right now <laughs> in Mark, uh, I would encourage you to, throughout the week, uh, pick up your Bible and uh, uh, just start skimming through the pages, uh, refreshing yourself. Uh, some of these stories, if you are, have... Uh, uh, read them over and over there uh, upon your thought process. You go, I know that story or I read that story over in this gospel or or that gospel And I just know these stories, but continue to read them Make sure that you as as I'm speaking you're like yeah, man pastor that this is where you can go Like I can put my Bible down and go. Amen. 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 You're you, you got it. You're on it God's really got this conversation going for all of us, as it was prayed for um, just uh, moments earlier about how our lives are affected, how we are um, effective, how we uh, uh, just make this walk. So here we are in Mark chapter 2. And with Mark, uh, I'm going to tell you what, uh, unless you are uh, a follower of Christ, and, and by that I mean this, um, I, I've had some conversations throughout this week, especially where people are like, oh, I'm this or I'm that, and um, I, uh, I follow these teachings or that, that teaching. I'm gonna, uh, actually, I'm saying it wrong. I associate my thought process that, see that church way over there? That's my church. I don't ever go, but that's my church. And, and that, you know what? I'm going to be blunt. Then you're not a follower of Christ, first of all. When you, like we started off in Mark chapter 1, guess where Christ went? Church, I'm going to put it in today's terms, he went to the synagogue. When he went into a town, he went into the synagogue. When it was time to be in the synagogue, he went into the synagogue. That's what he did. He was the greatest of examples of one who did what he was supposed to in following his father, God. What an example. So if that's your church, or if this is your church, then be there. Be a follower of the example Christ sets for us. And when you're that kind of person, then you can know peace, peace, wonderful peace. When we talk about resting in this and resting in that, with all of the trials and the turmoils and, and the toils and all that stuff that was in that song, all of that is surrounded and bathed in peace, peace, wonderful peace. I'm, I, I probably, if I was to pick verses, man, that last verse, I will see the author of peace. I love how the, write, the writer wrote that because, he, you know, people are like, well, what's he talking about? Jesus. He's talking about my father. He's talking about how I will be face to face with the one who gives me this peace today in this moment. As it was said earlier, that there's probably some things we all have some issue, either health or financial or this or that. We have a need. And I'm going to tell you, the peacemaker meets the need only if you know him. So here we are. This, I say all that because Mark, in the writings of Mark, it is this. Come. Come. Follow me. This is, Jesus, this is like Jesus' ministry. I'm going to proclaim the kingdom. I'm going to proclaim the good news. And so that you can know what that good news is, what do you got to do? Follow me. And so he calls the Levite. He calls Matthew. He calls the tax collector. I'm at verse 30 in chapter 2. Then Jesus went out to the lake shore again and taught the crowds that were coming to him. And he walked along and he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me, 
and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. There were many people of this kind among Jesus' followers. But when the teachers of the religious law, who were, the, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. And I'm going to pause, because I'm doing two stories um, this is the first one where he calls Matthew. And so I will emphasize again, if you want to say you are a follower of Christ, it is in the word that is mentioned, follower. <laughs> come and follow. Hey, Matthew, come and follow. And like earlier in chapter 1 and, the, and chapter 2, you have where when, someone, when the Savior comes up and says, hey, come follow me, they immediately do it. it the, I, this should bring about an excitement, a rekindling of your own spirit. Because he has called me, he has called you to follow him. And so it should be this like bubbling, like, yes, I'm just going to follow him. He's asked me to, I'm going to follow him. Follow me. In this section of the story, now, you, you know what? We live in a world that and it has not changed where, um, if, if I may say it this way, if the, the three letters are mentioned, IRS, <laughs> you're like, there's like a, a cringe. Like, you know what? Get out of my business. <laughs> I, I don't want to give you no money. You don't give me enough money. And so, really, I don't even like you. And, 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 and I'm just saying it in the sense of, please, don't, Pastor Brent hates IRS people. It's not that. It's just that we live in a world that we actually present the thought process that was even still in Jesus' time. Tax collector people, they are the worst. They are, as in the righteous people, the Pharisees, they're scum. And I don't know what your translation says, but my translation said scum because it puts in perspective how much we dislike you people. And that has not, Jesus, is, Jesus is, has ascended to heaven and even now today you still have where the IRS is mentioned or tax time comes or that dreaded April 15th, whatever. You know, people are just like, ugh, they're scum. And I'm going to say that as followers of Christ, we are taught right here, they are not scum. IRS is not the most evil thing in the world. Put it in perspective. And so here we have where a tax man is called and he follows. He follows, you know, and it's not just, hey, come hang out with me, listen to my stories. In this part, Jesus is like, not only follow me, I want you to be my disciple. I want you to take and be a sponge and absorb all that I have so that you can make a disciple, so that you can teach someone else how, what it means to be a follower of the Savior. That's what I want from you, Matthew. Not just hang out with me. I want you to be a disciple, which we then know becomes a disciple maker. And that has not changed either. You follow Christ, and his purpose is so that others will follow Christ. And he intends to use you in that venue, that avenue, that perspective, that walk of your life. So, follow. And now here we have where not only does he follow, but he, hey Jesus, you and your disciples, come hang out with me. <laughs> come to my house for dinner. Come 
and let's eat together. If I can say this, from that time where Jesus is hanging out with, with uh, uh, the, the, the scum, <laughs> the, the, uh, the unreputable people, the sinners, the worst of the worst. Actually, can I say it this way? What it is is, in the story here of Mark, it is a, a, an opportunity to see two sides. Here you have those who think they are so righteous, who think they are the thing, the, uh, uh, there's none better than them, and then you have the other people, and they are worse, and they are scum, or the tax collectors, or whatever. And so you have where there's this dinner, but even at that time where Jesus goes and sits with them and dines with them, they knew back then what has also, may I say this, not changed today either. This is going to be one of those, it has not changed at all. And so as Jesus is eating dinner with them, what it does is it brings about this thing of an expression of identity, an expression of belonging. Because when you go and eat with someone, it is, it is a closeness that takes place. You know what? In, in our house, we do it with especially dinner. Dinner is a close time of, of identity, a close time of belonging. You know, and, and it's, uh, it's difficult sometimes. How many have ever gone to, um, I came from a large, large family. Um, have you ever gone to a dinner with your large family? Now, if you don't, that's okay. I'm just going to share real quick with you. It, it can be difficult sometimes. You, you're counting, you know, or let's do this. Let's go church potluck. There's only three chicken legs left. And there's like eight people ahead of me. I don't know. But I belong here. It's my church. <laughs> it's my place. This is where I identify. This is where I feel the love. But man, there's only three legs left. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what. Even in that, you feel, I do belong here. This is my place. And so Jesus goes into a home. And that is exactly what he brought. You belong. I am part of you. You're mine. Come follow me in this closeness. You belong. And that has not changed. This place, this church, you belong. If you, and I have to emphasize, especially if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, that identity, that, that, that belonging is I have this is even greater than if someone was just to walk in who does not know the Savior. But they are, this is the beauty of, I have to say, with the Church of God movement. They belong. When someone walks into these doors, no matter how they are, no matter how they smell, no matter how they look, no matter how they speak, no matter who they are, Christ wants them to belong, to be part of this dinner table. Man, and that is beautiful. That, that makes me step back and go, you know what? We live in a world of judgment. And Christ teaches us that, you know what? You have got to get over the tax collector mentality to understand the family of the kingdom. The Pharisees, they were, they were the skilled ones. They were the ones that could sit down with the book of Moses and go, let me just tell you what the book of Moses says. Let me tell you what the, not only what the book of Moses says, but let me put it in perspective, you ain't doing it. <laughs> and so, because you ain't doing it, that does make you scum. This is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of putting it in, but you have to have an understanding that the Pharisees, they studied, 
especially the book of Moses, they studied in such a way they knew every law. They knew how the law was supposed to be laid out and played out. They knew when you didn't do it. They knew when you missed washing the cup. They knew when you, were, when you missed doing that. They knew that you weren't doing it right. And so they, they held that up against you. This book of Moses condemns you to death because you're not doing it. We, on the other hand, have studied it and we do the law now and, and we're going to get into where the the law thing is where they're going to have a problem because right away in knowing the, the 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 book of Moses they have messed up with placing traditions and rules and regulations that began to trump obeying God now I mean because especially in Jesus's time because Jesus comes in and says that uh, you're supposed to uh, uh, if you hate your brother that's like murder thou shalt and I do believe Pharisees that in the book of Moses it says thou shalt not kill yet if you hate your brother that's like killing it, 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 see some people are not going to ever ever grasp that because what Jesus is say, saying that as you put up traditions and rules and regulations, you are missing what God has for the dinner table. You're missing. That's why I see you as a tax collector, as scum. I see you with all your other sinner friends that you bought ar around that table as this is not only, this is the scum table. And, and if you bring in enough people, because you, have, you say you have a large family, you bring in enough people, now you have a scum house. And so, because of who we are as Pharisees, we begin to do that, and we are, they are missing the boat of the dinner table. In fact, in that section of the story, Jesus emphasizes this. You have missed what is worth. The people that you're calling names, they need a healer. The people that you are calling names, they need a savior. The people that you are calling names, they need God. The people that you are calling names, they are sick and they need health. Now you say that you're righteous. You say that you're the, the, the holy ones. You say that you're healthy. You say this. So then Jesus, rather than condemning them, it's like this. So if you're healthy, that's fine. But these sick people, they need me. That's why I'm at the dinner table. And we need to be a people just like Christ. Not on our high horse, holy, holier than thou, but rather looking at individuals and going, how can I introduce you to peace? How can I introduce you to health how can I introduce you to the one that is all of that scum <laughs> just so we're on the thing because guess what I was scum and I was introduced to the one who brings peace who brings healing and that's why we you know what the Pharisees were missing it they were missing what was worth in the eyes of God and Jesus was telling them in that early story there I come to call not those who think they are righteous but those who know they are sinners Wow the second story verse 18 talking about fasting once when John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting some people came to Jesus and asked can I interject so I guess John and his disciples were not scum because <laughs> the Pharisees they were right there fasting with them. When John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, some people came to Jesus and asked, why don't your disciples fast like John's disciples and the Pharisees do? Jesus replied, do wedding guests fast while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. They can't fast while the groom is with them. But someday the groom will be taken away from them and they then they will fast. Besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth. 
leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the wine would burst the wineskins, and the wine and the skins would both be lost. New wine calls for new wineskins. Two stories here. See, I, I want us to grasp that, you know what, when you begin to look at people the way God looks at them, then God allows you to have an understanding of deeper teaching. Hey, why, what, how come, your disciples, you know what? They're not fasting. Now, remember what I told you about the, the Pharisees who were uh, always checking out the law and knowing the law? You know what? Hey, we know about fasting. That is why, with John's disciples, we are fasting. Well, according to Leviticus, the book of Moses, the law, you only have to fast one day. One day, what was it? One, let, me, let, me, let me just uh, uh, make sure I'm on the, right, on the right track here. Only one day of fasting was required by law. According to Leviticus chapter 16, verse, starting in verse uh, uh, 29 and 30. One day is required. I like that word because, see, Pharisees would love that. What is required of me? One day of fasting. That's what's required. That's according to the book of Moses. That's according to what you, your, your holiness, you know, you people of holy righteousness are saying that the law says, okay, fasting, fast, 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 fast. Well, the law says only one day is required of fasting. And so, that's when Jesus comes in. It, you know what? Here's where it's a good thing Pastor Brent's not Jesus, because I would be all over you. Dude, <laughs> I had to do. Remember, I, 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 I'm on this thing for a couple of weeks now. Okay, right here. <laughs> Oops, let me get this this way. I'm sorry. It's Old Testament. Right here is where it says you must fast. It's required. The big R. I talked about the first story was I R S. Well, the R in this story is required. And people hate requirements. Requirements mean you have to do it. In order to be like them, you must fast, fast, fast. Well, the law says one day. And like I said, well, I learned from the first story that you got to be careful on how you begin to place traditions and rules and regulations on individuals that need Jesus. Because Jesus is like this, you know what? I know what the law says that it's required. One, I know what the law says. Can I, can I do Jesus for a sec? After all, I wrote the law. <laughs> I mean, we have to have an understanding that God, the Son, and the Spirit, all in one, and from the beginning of time, and so when the law is being written, and it's from God, it is because God and Jesus... They're all involved in this law about fasting. And so instead of putting someone, what I would say, in their place, you need to relook at that law. In fact, let me take you to the Leviticus chapter 16, verse 29 and verse 30. Let me take you there. Rather than Jesus doing that, Jesus comes to this part of, hey, wait a minute, just think about it this way. You know what? You want to know when it's inappropriate to fast? At a wedding. Now, may I say this? It's kind of easy to understand a grass. Can you imagine? Oh, the bride, she's so beautiful. She comes down, everybody stands. Bah, 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 bah. You know, and the, the minister gets up and, oh, that, I now pronounce you kiss, uh, kiss him. And, and now we have, isn't this beautiful? Because you know what happens at the end of the wedding? Reception time. I can't, I'm fasting. What? No, it's a celebration. I just got married. I invited you. I even gave you a place card so you can, so you can dine. And, uh, and sometimes when we dine, we can't eat meat. <laughs> just going to put that out there. I'm going to say this. You can still dine. <laughs> and so here... <laughs> glory to God. See, uh, you know what? It... it you have to ask people, what's, what's he talking about? Go to Pastor Mark and he'll tell you a story about the meat thing. This is the beauty of family sitting around a dining room table. So what's happening in your life? This right here. And so 
you don't go to a wedding feast and you don't go to the reception and put on your ashes and wear your sackcloth and go, oh, now is the time to fast. When, when the bride and groom, they want to celebrate. And so Jesus just lays it out so beautifully. You know what? You don't fast at a wedding. Of course not. You know, when the groom is with you, when the groom is hanging out with you, woohoo! Especially if you're the, uh, oh man, it's been, it's been 34 years. Um, uh, because you have the maid of honor and best man. Especially if you're like the best man. You planned and helped it and you got, everybody got this all together. So on that special day, man, I'm glad I have a place card at the dining table in the reception. No fasting at the wedding. But then Jesus, see, here's the thing. This, like I said, this is where Jesus and me are a little bit different. Because I'd be sitting there, hey, here's the law. <laughs> and Jesus is like this. But you know what, guys? When the groom is, when the bridegroom is gone, then these guys, my guys, the ones that I said, hey, come follow me. Come follow me and, and be my disciple. These guys, they then will fast. So it's not like, hey, you know what? I abolish all the things that, that God has set for us. No. Jesus says, I want you to get in perspective of what it means to have the dining room table and what it means to do at the dining room table and then what it means to actually fast. And that time is needed and it will come. And these guys, they will join right along with you. But may I say it this way? It'll be different than, oh, today is the day of fasting. It'll be with purpose. It'll be with, see, because fasting is this. It is, you, 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 it, you uh, fast, and so you're taking away something. And in that taking away of the meal or meals, you will then have replaced it with God. Easy thought process. If I'm not sitting at the table, hanging out with family, eating for a half an hour, I can take that time because I'm fasting. And, and now, I'll, guess what? Boom! Half hour, I got a half hour open up for God time. Where I can really come close to God. See, that's what fasting is all about. It's about this drawing into God. God, is there anything that I'm missing because I'm sitting at the dining room table? Is there anything I'm missing because I'm watching all this television? Is there anything I'm missing because I'm doing all of this that's about me? Is it, I'm, I'm, if, if I take a little bit of that away, not all of it, God, but if I take a little bit of it away and I decide that's my fast time, God, for not because it's a ritual, not because it's a special day of, 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 of on the calendar, but man, because I'm going to tell you what, God could call you at any time. Now is the time. I really need you. Can you fast for this time with me? And so Jesus puts it in perspective of the appropriate time when you can have a time of fasting. And then he goes in even deeper. See, that's the thing about fasting. God will draw you in with deeper understanding. And so right after that, he goes into the wineskin thing. Are you ready? You guys, and there's nothing wrong with it. You have all of the old. You have the old covenants. You have the old writings that put the law into perspective of, in truth. And you have all of that. And that is good. But it's almost as if he's saying, but you know what? As it wears on, you cannot take what is new and attach it to it. It'll rip, and all of a sudden that hole is bigger than ever before. But, if you take the new wine and put it into new skins, those are not lost. Okay? Now are you ready? Jesus, I am the new wine. I am this new kingdom talk. This new kingdom understanding. This new kingdom thought process of who I am and who my disciples are and who the disciples that they will make will be for generation after generation after generation. And can I, can I even put a little thought process into it? Man, what a great teaching of, you know what? 
sometimes the old that is over here is known and remembered and in such cases practiced but is never outshined by the new and so we as followers I, I say it with this some people get to this oh it's only got to be this old 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 way well no but there's some beauty in what is old see that's the thing when you're walking in the new and you're walking with the kingdom builder Jesus Christ following him all of a sudden you begin to go you know what I'm careful with how I look at the old. The, uh, what, the, what the new righteous people would say, the scum. I'm just telling you how it is. Because you have people that are like, oh, I'm better than what it was in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. And then we got to stop there because then we just got radically messed up. But <laughs> I'm better than all of that. And, and, and that's not it. What it is, is come to have an understanding of the one who speaks new. The Savior. Because the Savior, like I said, he didn't, he didn't abolish the fasting. He didn't abolish things. What he did is he brought it into per, a, a beautiful light of understanding how to sit at the table. Let us stand. Pastor Mark's going to come forward. Uh, you, you know what? As you leave this place, let me ask you a couple, just a couple questions before we sing. Um, I, I believe it's, I need thee every hour. You want to talk about, uh, man, come and follow me. I need him every hour. Let us stand. Where are you dining at? Where are you dining at? When you are about to dine, do you look at the person who is sitting at that tax booth going, you are scum. I am way better than you. Because then you will have lost. Mark chapter 2, starting at verse 13. That man, Jesus looks at people way different than the way the world looks at us or the way the world even looks at its own because the world doesn't even take care of its own it doesn't know peace it doesn't know health it doesn't know finance it, it just doesn't you might think it does that's how them uh, extra 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 people think they are but they just don't know and so how are you looking at those that you're about to dine with and I say that with this because as we pray God, Please, please continue to pray for other families to come in, for other people to come in. How, how can we, pastor, how can we go about it? Um, you know what? It, it's going to be about handing out cards and, and, and just dining with people and going, you know what? Here's what I know. No peace, okay? And dine with others so they too can come to know them. Who are you dining with and how are you um, with them always 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 check what's going into the wineskins check what is going into you because if what is the Savior goes into something that is come and I'm gonna say it this way if you're walking a life that is messed up you're a wineskin that cannot handle, hold, that, that cannot. Jesus wants you to be a new wineskin because he's the new wine. And so sometimes, yes, we have to change. Check yourself. Right? If, if you're the scum, dine at the table with the Savior. That's what he's for. See, some of us are going to take offense to that. You know what? Hey, if we walk in sin, we're dirty. We're unclean. But I know the one who can clean us. And it's Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, thank you for 
be in one who has called us to the table, who has called us to the altar, who has called us to you. May we never decide to walk out and picnic on our own. May we always have the desire to dine at your table. God, help us to uh, see the tax man in a different way. And by that, I mean, God, help us to see those that are in our paths with your eyes, with your love and your understanding. In Jesus' holy name.